We aren't the only store left in the mall. There's about six small stores total, but they are all spread out along the different spokes of this wagon wheel shaped mall. We're the only one in this section. Sometimes the other stores close early. Considering the lack of foot traffic, I don't blame them. But with all the other storefronts dark and much of the mall lighting itself dead, light can be very limited at night. I had never closed before, but at least Britt was going to be there with me. She was kind, peppy, and super helpful. The only thing is, Britt never came. She no call no showed, which she had never done before. I was worried and called our manager Chris. His exact response was, No one wants to work these days. You can close alone. It's fine. He came by and dropped off the extra gate key, muttering about work ethic. I bit my tongue at that. I know Britt, and that she and her family are short on money. She worked her ass off, and she'd never just skip work without a good reason. Even then, I was confident she'd let us know. But that is how I ended up where I am now. My knees pulled to my chest, phone on silent, my screen brightness turned down, waiting for the sun to come up. Not alone. I wish I were. I'm banking on whatever is out there being averse to sunlight because it's so pale, almost translucent. So how did I end up here, you ask? We hadn't had a customer in two hours, and the mall had descended into a level of darkness that surprised me. No wonder we got very little business after dark. From the road, I bet the whole mall looks like it's shut down. I wish we had some sort of music playing to break the utter silence, but the sound system, like most things in this place, was broken. I occupied myself by dusting and prepping everything for the next morning. It was both a good way to prepare for the approaching end of my shift, and to distract myself while making a bit of noise in the process, to cut through the thick silence. Eventually, I stepped out of the store and closed the gate, so I could take a quick bathroom break. I had written up a Be Right Back sign to stick on the gate, but I doubted it would be seen by any eyes other than my own. The green exit sign flickered at me before it too surrendered to the darkness. The only sounds I could hear were the buzzing of the struggling sign and my own footsteps echoing. I jumped as I saw a pale figure behind the glass of one of the closed stores out of the corner of my eye. I turned sharply, but it looked to be just the scant neon light coming from the distant and empty food court illuminating an old mannequin. No thanks, I thought to myself as I speed walk towards the bathroom. Why do mall bathrooms always have to be at the end of such long hallways? I suddenly wished I had brought my phone with me, even just to have the screen illumination. The inside of the bathroom was nice and bright, but as soon as I had entered the stall, a hoarse whisper from outside of the stall nearly made me jump. Please, I'm scared. What? I whispered back nervously. Silence. When I went to wash my hands, I noticed all the stalls were open, and it was quiet. I never heard anyone enter or leave. I thought I heard a choked sob from behind me, but chalked it up to my overactive imagination. The downside of the well-illuminated bathroom was that it made the hallway feel even more eerie once I entered back into the darkness. Once I was leaving, and nearly at the end of the hallway, I heard the other door to the other bathroom. I assumed the one across the hall, since there hadn't been anyone in the other bathroom with me, open and close from behind me. I reminded myself that the mall wasn't actually abandoned, so a customer emerging from the restroom was not a supernatural event. But what was concerning was how they filled the hallway with a pungent stench, like a dumpster full of old food that had been sitting out in the hot sun for days. I tried not to gag or to betray my fear by looking over my shoulder. I thought I heard a wheezing, rattling noise, like someone struggling to breathe. I quickened my pace. On my way back, I instinctively glanced back at the storefront with the mannequin that had scared the crap out of me earlier. The store was empty now. Nope, I sprinted back to my store. I could hear the wheezing and a sort of dragging shuffling behind me in the distance. I struggled with the gate because my hands were shaking but I finally got it open. I opened it just enough for me to slide under, and I decided to close it behind me. If a customer didn't happen to come, I'd just unlock it and let them in. I felt infinitely better after I had locked the gate behind me. I drummed my fingers nervously on the counter, 
when I noticed my fingers and palms were dirty. It looked like blood, when was patterned as if it had come from the gate. It was thicker, darker though. It didn't look fresh. I tried to convince myself that it wasn't blood, and even if it were, there was a perfectly logical explanation. I went to the back to look for paper towels. I was not going to go back to the bathroom. I had been working in the back for a bit, and had regained my composure for the most part, when I heard what sounded like someone shaking the gate. Oops, it sounded like we did have a customer after all. There was no one there by the time I made it to the gate. If they called and complained to Chris, I'd never hear the end of it. I did feel guilty too. I always strive to provide great customer service. I was just so unnerved that I was off my game. I approached the gate. Hey, I'm sorry, we're open. I whispered to the darkness. Silence was the response. Although I thought I heard the faint rattling wheeze again, I craned my neck and angled my body so I could look and further down the corridor. I could make out a tall, pale figure in the distance. Ah, so someone from one of the other stores was pranking me by moving mannequins around. Great. But as I stared, the distant purple neon light from the food court illuminated it enough for me to see that its arms and legs were too long. Its torso was too short to resemble any mannequin I had ever seen. The pale arms ended in long, fingered hands stained a dark color. The exit sign it was standing under chose that moment to feebly attempt to flicker back to life. Flash, flash, flash. In each flicker of the weak green light, I got a brief look at its face. It was looking off to the side. I didn't see any eyes, but I could see what looked like slits for a nose and a long, wide mouth. I jumped back and gasped. In my haste, I accidentally rattled the gate, loudly. Its head instantly jerked in my direction. Damn. Flash, flash, flash. It was coming closer. I ran back and did my best to jump and clear the counter, but instead hung my foot and crashed into the display behind it. I didn't try and fix it. I just sat in a sort of upright fetal position. My khakis were torn and a small line of blood seeped from my knee. I had scraped my chin and elbow on something, but I was otherwise physically okay. Chris is never going to let me hear the end of it for knocking the display over. It's still outside the gate. I can't see it, so I hope it can't see me. But every so often I hear it wheezing. A low, guttural he coming from it directly outside. Right now I hear it rattling the gate, mixed in with sounds as if it's scraping long, thin fingers down the bars. I wonder if maybe Brit didn't know call no show after all. Maybe she never left the mall after she locked up last night. I'm not going home tonight. I'm waiting until the sun comes up. Oh, and I'm never closing again. <laughs>